Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to look at different algorithms that helps you uh, perform search in a vector database or a vector store. Uh, while you are building a rack pipeline, you will be using this under the hood of your vector database accessory stores like Chroma, FAS, QDRANT, Milverse, Weviate, and Pinecone, and so on and so forth, right? We'll go deeper and see how we how these products or the open source libraries uses these algorithms like HNHWLib, uh, Google Scan, you know, Spotify, Enoy, FAS clustering, and some of the other algorithms as well. Now, I already have created a video uh, where I have shown that how you can create your own vector store from scratch. And that was the first part of this video. This is the second part that I'm going to explain, you know, uh, more in depth that how this happens when you are performing the retrieval task, right? How these algorithms basically, you know, create indexes, then perform some kind of sem uh, semantic search with different matrices that you can, you know, configure. Now, this is going to be an important video for you to understand. Uh, is how this technology works, how RAG pipelines works in a, in a, uh, mainly for the retrieval part because generation is more out of the box where you just feed your retrieved context to a large language model, of course, with different uh, methods like re-ranking, uh, long context re or so on and so forth have been used recently. Now, I will recommend you to watch this video till the end if you want to uh, learn and derive a lot of findings. If you are not interested to watch the video and directly want to jump into the code you can just get it from my github repository that's in the uh, video description but this video will help you understand that how this vector databases and stores basically works under the hood and how langchain have been utilizing them you know as a high level abstract class so let's start our experimentation with these different algorithms to see that how we can you know build our own vector store from scratch all right uh let's start our experimentation with the different ann algorithms and for that experimentation you can see i am in my jupyter notebook and we will have a look at few algorithms and techniques uh, let me write it over here i want to explain that in detail so you understand the you know uh, intricate details about these algorithms and you know, uh, and this uh, algo as in techniques rather than just focusing on Langchain or Llama index abstract classes, right? That will definitely not make you good, uh, not make you, not make you an expert in generative AI or a large language model if you don't understand how this algorithm works. Now, uh, let me first write out uh, different ANN algos, okay? And here I'll first write, uh, for example, we're gonna look at. Uh, we're going to look at uh, first, for example, we'll start with HNSW, okay, or let me write it fully, HNSW live, this is more of proximity graph, and don't worry, I will explain everything once I am once I start covering this one by one. Second will be uh, Google is NN or scan N. That's for that's mainly a very that's very in, intuitive because it's not graph based. This is a, a more of a vector compression. So let me just write that. And then we have at number three, we'll look at Spotify NOI, okay, which is really interesting as well. Okay, uh, it is tree based. So let me just write trees here. Okay, and uh, the last we'll also probably look at you know fast. You know you already know fast, but I'll just cover because it 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 is just clustering in a way so i'll just cover this okay so diff these are the different algos that we'll look in this video you know hnsw lip google scan spotify annoy and fast if you want to build your own vector database or a vector store like wav8 pinecone qdrant milver so on and so forth right how can you uh create a novel architecture because if you create the same way that they are doing it you will not succeed in your startups right it will not work out because there are already thousands of vector databases startups that are working maybe you can have an ensemble you know architecture you can have an ensemble approach of different ann algorithm nearest neighbors algorithms you know approximate nearest neighbors by the way or something very new right which is not right right there and people are trying to solve that and that's why this this tutorial is important for you if you don't want to go deeper dive if you don't want to dive deeper into this technology you can skip this video you don't have to watch it but if you really want to understand how these things works 
then I think this will probably will be very helpful for you. Okay. Now all of these are being used by Chroma DB in some aspect, like for example, HNSW, FAST as clustering, some of the others, like they use vector compression and all, right? So this these organizations, products, startups, whatever you call them, depending on which vector database you use, they have been using these algorithms in their product development. So you can also do that. Of course, you can come up with different approaches as well. We'll start with, uh, as I said, we'll start with HNSW live first. Okay, let's start with that. Now, HNSW live, and I'll also write, keep on writing here as a documentation because this will help you. So, HNSW, for example, is a, I hope I spelled it right, it's a hierarchical navigable small world. That's what the, uh, that's what the acronym is for. I don't know if I if spelled it right. Okay, R A R C H I. Hopefully, uh, navigable uh, a small world. Okay. Now this is what it stands for. It's a graph-based algo. Okay, it's a graph-based algo. You know, used for efficient approximate nearest neighbor. Okay, that's what we do in a. Uh, in a n dimensional space when we work with a vector store or a vector database once you create and store the embeddings right now approximate uh, nearest neighbors or oh, that's what basically your ann is okay now this search in a very high dimensional space so i'm just write like high d space okay or rather it will be spaces then now hnsw is part of the uh is a part of library of hnsw library hnsw live it's a library that we have it's a part of that and you know it's, it's very popular for its performance uh perf performance in terms of speed and accuracy for ann task Now, and that's what we're going to do here. So probably let me just one more, more enter. Okay, now this is fine. This is a very high level intro of HNSW lib. And this is what we're going to try here, guys. And for that, what we're going to do is we'll have a sample text, some paragraphs or some sentences. We'll use an uh, embedding model to first create some embeddings. And then we'll use this algos to perform the retrieval task. So let's do that. The first part of the video that I created, how to create a vector store from scratch, where I covered more more, uh, more of the CRUD, uh, CRUD application, where you have create, read, update, delete application in the vector store. How to do those tasks that has been already covered. Now, this is the next step of it, how to do the retrieval with different algos. Now, the first thing that we have to do is install. So let me just do pip install. We need an embedding model. For that, I'm going to use an open source model for from sentence transformers. So let me just do that. So sentence transformers and then HNSW live, of course, the library that we have. So let me just install this pip install sentence transformer and HNSW live. Okay. You can do this exercise in Colab notebook as well or wherever notebook that you want to, you know, uh, try it out. You can do that. Now, once we do that, we'll use, uh, let me just write the code also. So from sentence transformers, so let me just write it down. I'm going to use imp, uh, sentence transformer class. So this is how we import that sentence transformer. And then we need numpy. Okay, so import numpy as np. This is what we need. And I will add few more cells after that. Uh, what else we need is to model and I'm going to use mini language model L6V2. So let me just do that. So for that, I'm going to use this sentence transformer class that I have defined above. I'm still not running it because, okay, I think this has been, okay, this has been run successfully. Now we can get this in and now I'm going to have sentence transformer class. So let's just do that. Now here I'm going to use this model which is mini lm <coughs> excuse me mini lm l6 and then v2 
this is the model that I'm going to use and you can see it's completely importing I'll just add few more cells and after that we need some paragraphs so let me just get the paragraphs in okay and let me get this in as well the model and it will take a bit of time to get the model in but let's get the paragraph so I already have created a set of paragraphs for us so let me just get it from here let me just do raw and I will just copy this so let me copy it over here and come back okay and you can see now imagine if you use Langchain, you know, pipe PDF loader or directory loader or document loader, whatever, and you get the text, right? These are all, as you can see, it's a Python list and it all have an element. Uh, if you do zero, it will come this, then this, then this, right? So similarly, you can have, you can replace this with your PDF uh, con uh, content as well, your extracted text. Now I have paragraphs here. I'm going to define this paragraph. So let me just do that. Now on top of these paragraphs, what I have to do is, I have to basically create uh, the, f the next thing which is the generate the embedding so let me just define <clears throat> something called generate embeddings so let me just do that and here in embeddings I'm going to encode that so model.encode sentence transformer has a class uh, uh, sorry excuse me in sentence transformer class has a method encode and here I'm going to pass my paragraphs now this is a paragraph that I'm passing and it should generate the embeddings for me you can see it took around one second to generate the embeddings and once i then again print embeddings you will see an array of numerical representations and you can find it out over here now your embeddings are done here i will then import hnsw lib okay so import hnsw lib that we have installed then we need the dimensions of the embedding and for that uh let's have a variable called dime dimensions and when i use the sep method sep not the method sep and then one so dimension of the embeddings and now here we'll initialize okay so initialize the hnsw lib index so index equals dot index you can see it has two bf index and index and index i'm going to have some space so let's just do some give some space and then i'm going to keep dimension equal dimensions excuse me Sorry, I wrote 80. It's I don't know. It's L2. Okay, so you can see it's suppose uh, it's space must be one of the L2 IP or cosine depends on which uh, similarity space that we're gonna use. Okay, so what kind of uh, basically it's again an algorithm within an algo that we are using. So uh, cosine similarity you would have heard. You would have about Euclidean, Jacquard, Levenstein, you know, dot, so on and so forth. Right. So this is what it is now. In space, I'm going to use L2 for this. So let's just uh, do L2. And this is something you can also read because this is important that you should have the understanding of how are we, you know, initializing these different dimensions and all, uh, etc. Now, L2 is done for Euclidean distance. And the dimension that you have are for the on the top in cell number 8 is the dimension uh, of the data points. Okay. Now you can also further make it more complex, you know, if you want to make it more complex, but you know, it's fine. So let's uh, move further and let me just run this now. And you can see it's now takes your index. Now, shape one, if you have, if you want to know more, it determines the dimensionality of the embeddings. Embeddings dot shape one gives the number of columns. In the embeddings array which correspond uh, corresponds to the size of uh, of each embedding vector okay now this l2 creates an instance of the hnsw index now the space parameter is set for the euclidean distance that will help us measure the distance between points now you'll have n number of points the vectors that you'll have in a high dimensional space how can you measure the distances between these you know vectors that that's why we are using the euclidean and the dimensional parameter is specified the dim dimensionality of the data point that we have uh, on top. 
Now moving on next what I'm gonna do is once we do that uh, Let's initialize the index now. So for that I'm gonna have a number of elements so Number elements. Let's first get the length of paragraphs Okay, and excuse me num elements and you can see it's 50 okay now there are some parameters that you know we can consider let me first write it then i will explain okay these are some uh, parameters that we can tune as well so i'm going to initialize the index so you can see it has init index method and inside this i'm going to pass something called max elements and for that i'm going to use the number of elements because and it's a better way of doing it so you should know what's the uh, number of elements in your paragraphs that you have and for this i'm going to call this num elements and then i have something called i'll explain that uh how should we why it's not showing me ef construction and then i will have something called m and this is very very interesting uh, to understand that why are we using this now ef construction and m are parameters that control the construction of the index and that affects your speed and accuracy that how fast your retriever will be you know uh, in a way because these are very helpful uh, once we uh, tweak these uh, parameters okay now the above that we have defined is max elements equal to number of elements that basically sets the maximum number of elements or embeddings that the index can hold and this is what it is now let me just define these uh, numbers here so for that what i'm going to do is uh, ef construction equals let's keep 200 and then m equals to 16. okay and now we're going to add the embeddings to the index so let's add embeddings into the index and here index dot add items okay and add items i'm going to add embeddings now we are done with the add embeddings part now we have to query the index so how can we query the index is something that we let me just after here we'll add one more i'll make it markdown so let me just do this markdown thing and let me say querying the index okay now for that uh let me add uh so let me first have a query sentence let's have that so query sentence and let's call something like programming languages like python have revolutionized software development and i believe that's true revolutionized software development now this is my this is my query that i have Okay, or let me just make it a doc string so you can i can just divide it in software uh, revolutionized software development and then just end the doc string now this is my query sentence now again we have to create the embeddings that's what we do right once you build a rag pipeline retrieval augmented generation what we do there guys okay once we get the query from end user again we have to create the embeddings of it and that's why we do right we again use the embeddings to create embeddings and then we use that uh embeddings to go inside the vector database and find out the relevant chunk or the similar chunks for that exactly that's what we are doing now uh, not through a high level abstract class but here we are going a bit deeper to understand how it really does now query embeddings equals model dot encode and in this encode what i'm going to do is pass this as a python list and you can pass m num n number of thingy here so for that query sentence and let's do that now let me also print query embedding for you so you can just see there's again a, a numerical representation inside an array and that's what we have let me just add a couple of more cells now we'll query the index so query index so query the index let's uh how many no number of nearest neighbors so for now let's keep two and see what it does or let, let's keep two for now and we'll see now what i'm saying is labels and distances equals index dot 
KNN query. Okay, this is the method that I am using KNN query, and you can see it takes uh, index. So it takes your index and it takes your uh, query embeddings. It also takes K, which is the integer value that we already have defined. So let me just pass query embedding and then let me just pass K equals K and let's run this now. Okay, we have ran it and now what I'm going to do is let's print this and see some result. So print query and inside this query, I'm going to pass query sentence and then okay let's me first get this it says query was programming software like um i can just write it here only so what i'm going to do next is for label and distance we have to zip that so in zip and inside that i'm going to pass my labels the first one of the labels and the first one of the distance uh, excuse me the distances so let's do that okay so uh, labels and distances and then this is okay and then just print so print and paragraph and this will hold your paragraph thingy so paragraphs label paragraphs label and then come out of this key value pair and then then you write distance so distance will again be very similar ah excuse me distance will again be distance so let's do distance okay so what we are doing here is we are saying okay a uh, paragraph and then we are giving paragraphs label and then we are saying distance and then just giving the distance let's print it out and now you can see it says Programming languages like Python have revolutionized software development. This was your query. Now that these are the two results that we have fetched. Okay, and this is important to understand. I'll explain that uh, why. And let me just explain this part also. Uh, K equals to two that you see. It sets the number of nearest neighbors to find. And labels and distance that we are using performs a K nearest neighbor. You know, very traditional machine learning algorithms that we have used n number of times once we used to you know uh, use with knn algorithms that we used to work uh i don't know after uh, after the rise of chat gpt and genetic where people are still using it but i think they are there is still a need of it now you can see performs a k nearest neighbor query using the hnsw index now it returns the indices which are basically nothing but the labels of the nearest neighbors in the index data and their respective distances from the query embeddings and that's what it does now to understand the results uh, you can see that we have got two responses, two paragraphs basically. This was your result. Now the distance score that you see in the right hand side, basically it it represents how close or far the embeddings of each paragraph is from the embedding of your query sentence. Now the in the context of HNSW lab, the distance is calculated based on the metric we have specified. So metric that we have specified is Euclidean distance. This is what we did with L2 here that you see. L2 is what where we do Euclidean distance in your case and the space equal to L2. Now, lower score equals to closer match. So let me just write it over here. I'll make this markdown. Okay. So results interpretation. Of course, we can sort this out and that's, that's how we sort this. So lower score equals closer match. That's what we do do here. So closer match. So lower distance that you see a 0 0.7363 that we have on the top for the history of Python dates back uh, to the late 1980s. Now closer match to the query. Now the closer the score is zero, the more similar the paragraph is to the query sentence that we have, and that's what it is. Okay, so you can find out. Now this is our experimentation with HNSW, uh, and I hope you. Uh, I hope you understood the first one HNSW live the proximity graph which is an acronym for hierarchical navigable small world you know that that's been used uh, for efficient NN search in high dimensional spaces like vector database and vector store now what we will do guys we'll move to the next one that we have in our list to you know explore which is Google scanner vector compression we'll look at that uh, the next and so uh, you can if you want to skip the video if you know, if you have already familiar with Google Scan, you can just skip to the Spotify NOI. Now, but let's start our experimentation with Google Scan here.
so let me just add a few uh, let me just add a few sales first and then we'll move to our second algo for the day which is Google SCNN okay this is what we're gonna look at in this one now Google SCNN is is really really interesting and it's there's an acronym for let me just write it first okay uh, what was that scalable nearest neighbors so this is the uh, this is the acronym for this and this has been designed for you know this has been designed for efficient efficient vector similarity uh vector similarity uh search at scale so this will help you at scale and it's suited for handling very large data sets okay, very large data sets so this is not a graph based but this is this leverages techniques like and that's we will we'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of course because you know sometimes you know it sometimes there will be trade-offs for the speed sometimes the trade-off will be for the accuracy and a lot of other uh, parameters that we'll talk about in the end of the videos okay now techniques like vector compression and quantization to speed up the search of course there will be some performance degradation that might happen because you are compressing it and that's there's no doubt about it but uh, so you know it achieves its efficiency through a few let me just have some features so i'll just write it like how did it works okay so the feature is partitioning the first is the way it create the partitions the partitioning so dividing the data sets dividing the data sets into smaller more manageable clusters that's the first one the second one is quantization so approximating the high dimensional spaces or not high dimensional spaces that should be vectors high dimensional vectors with compact lower dimensional representation that's that's how basically quantization will ha also happen isn't it now dimensional representations and the third one and the third one is scoring the way it scores so you just uh and i will co will cover this as well so let me just write we'll cover this once we are scoring it so using efficient algos to compute ann okay approximate nearest neighbor this is very high level about google's canon and this again a library available for that so we have to install that so let me just do that so what i'm going to do is pip install scnn and i'm going to install this library it says could not find a version and this is uh, that requirements oh okay this is surprising so let me just do because i think there's a problem if i just do here pip install it should work in colab i understand that the library might not support the latest version of python let me see that fine so we'll move from there to here for at least this one so let me just make it uh, a bit bigger so you can see it and we don't need that okay so let me just okay we'll for at least with google we'll work in this one uh because you know it does not support my local notebook due to the python version conflicts i'm sure about that and you know it's it's okay it's an acronym for scalable nearest neighbor it has in its name guys you know it's, it's used for scalability okay if you want to scale this you scale your vector databases further that is what, that is what going to help you now let's start our code here so for that we'll have a few things again let's let's just get it uh mm, let me see so from i'm not sure if sentence transformers are part of colab by default you know they have made a lot of changes recently but i don't think that it's a part so but anyway we'll try it out 
if it's not a part of that okay it's not a part of that so let me just add after here anyway it seems meanwhile i will get the paragraph so let me just get the paragraph here so paragraphs and this is all going to be our paragraph and after this we'll have the we'll load the model okay it says no module let me just install that if there is no module pip install sentence transformer thingy so sentence transformers and this will install sentence transformer and after that let's bring the model here so let's initialize the mini lm l6 version 2 model you can see it suggests already and google collab is work uh, generative ai is working fine in google, google collab the recommendation that it gives it's pretty impressive now uh okay again at least till embedding generation it will be the same so let me just run this quickly after i run this i will run this part as well because it has to download the model weights of mini lm l6 b2 around some 500 plus mb okay of the model weights now you can see that is done let me just get the, this thing in and after that let me add a couple of cells and first thing that i'm going to do is embeddings and embeddings is going to be numpy dot array so numpy dot array and i'm going to do model encode paragraphs this is what i'm going to do it says no numpy it seems which is fine so for that let's get it here only so for that let me just add to import numpy as np Okay, and now this NP has been used here model dot in code. So here what we're doing is we're generating the embeddings guys So let's do that and you can also print it says name paragraphs is not defined So let's define it and once it is done We'll go to the next that will create your embeddings and here I'm going to write the same thing print num print number of embeddings Number of embeddings and then it will basically create your embeddings dot set sip and then goes your first one it should just print the embeddings and if you want to see that the numerical representation of your vectors you can also find it out over here now let's import scann -A -N. this is what i'm going to do here and you can see i've imported successfully hopefully okay yeah now now here here we're going to assume a few things and you know we have to do on uh, top like that so let me exp let me first write the code and then i will explain that what are we doing here because uh we need an uh, scnn builder so we need a scalable approximate nearest neighbor builder there's basically a builder class with the embeddings the number of neighbors to return and the similarity metric you know that can be dot that can be any others as well so let's let's do that so for that what i'm going to do is let me just first write it down here okay so let me first write the code and then i will explain so let's call it searcher and you can it's you can see it suggests something but i'm not interested totally probably in that okay so uh partially i need that part of code but i will just write okay ops and i need the pi bind as well but i don't need load searcher for now what i need is builder okay, i need the builder one so pi bind builder yeah this is what i need perfectly fine now you can see what we are doing here we have an embeddings and then after that embeddings we have some uh parameter that we are uh, tweaking basically then that value that 10 that you see is basically the number of neighbors to return because i have 51 here the paragraph 50 paragraphs and i want 10 to uh 10 number of neighbors to return and then i am using a similarity metric which is nothing but the dot product in this case and then i'm saying okay i'm using a tree i don't know why why it's uh showing me that uh thingy here but anyway let me just get that okay ah, this is bad okay tree and then i will close this here now if you look at what we are doing we have a tree and inside that tree we have a number of leaves because it's if you can see number of lifts, it says 2000. I don't need 2000 as number of lifts. That's too much for me. What I'm going to do, I'll keep it very less. I'll keep it 10 as a reduced number of lifts. And then it says number of number of lifts to search. And I'll just say five, just search in five lifts just to save some time. But you can, you know, you can tweak around these numbers. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is have something called training. Uh, yeah sample size perfect and let's keep that 50 if you have your large uh, corpus of text then you have to this number will be higher 
and then basically this adjusts to match the number of embeddings right we have 50 that's why i'm keeping it 50 you know the tree basically configure the tree part that you see this is the tree part this configure the partitioning of the data set okay basically create the smaller data sets right and number of leaves is the total number of partitions that it has and number of leaves to search is the number of partitions to search in for a query that's what basically is doing now we have something called ah which is really intuitive and that's why data structure guys are really important right ah is nothing but the asymmetric hashing if you have studied hash then you will understand hash trees and all hash tables etc now score underscore ah sets up the scoring configuration using a asymmetric hashing ah and anisotropic quantization that's really you know uh, that will be too technical to cover probably in this video maybe we can have a separate if if you guys can share your thoughts in comment box if you want to understand that how any tropic quantization works for uh, s canon I, I think i can cover that as well now here what we are doing is let's understand that this is a scoring configuration using a hashing mechanism that we are doing so let me just do that so it's score underscore ah and i'm going to set this h2 so let me just do that and then i have something called anisotropic so let me just do anisotropic okay uh anisotropic quantization threshold and let's keep 0 0.2 and then reorder i don't want 100 it's too big and then just build that now let me just run and see perfect now you can see that we have our uh this part is done our builder has done its job now i'm just going to query the uh uh, this whatever we have created so far so basically the build is nothing but builds the scanner searcher that we have uh, scalable approximate nearest neighbor that 100 that you see uh, or the 10 that you see here the 10 that we have it's basically nothing but it's for reorders the top 10 candidates from the ah scoring for accuracy that's what we are we are doing that okay so now let's go in and let's have our query so query sentence equals and i will have the same query where is that where i was using for software development thingy okay this this is what it is okay so let me just get it ah, excuse me this has to be a string so let me just get that cool this is again our query sentence and we're going to use the same embedding thingy so query embeddings equals model dot encode query sentence now we have let me just print query embedding as well so you can just see it ah excuse me this is not capital let me add few more code cells here now we have our query embeddings now we have to reshape guys we have to reshape the query embedding to an one dimensional array okay so let me just do that so query underscore embed x i don't know why it's written capital maybe probably i just do underscore that's why query embeddings equals query embedding dot reshape so query underscore embedding dot reshape and just i'm gonna use for the reshape let's just do a reshaping of this now we're going to use the reshaped query embeddings for searching so for that i'm going to have neighbors so neighbors and then distances so neighbors distances and then searcher dot search searcher dot search and here i'm going to just put query embedding and final number of neighbors that's what we're going to return final number of neighbors five okay now let's print uh, so print query and inside this query i'm going to have my query sentence query sentence and then print uh, nearest neighbor for what wrong i am doing that it says it's okay i forgot to give comma here excuse me okay uh what the heck ah this would be inside this is so bad okay and then what i'm doing is for idx okay the indices of neighbors so let's get the neighbor and distance 
uh, this looks good so for idx neighbor distance in enumerator and we're jipping it the neighbors and distance then saying saying after that let's have our paragraphs also so uh, okay so the in indent is also wrong see paragraph and then paragraph equals extended paragraph equals paragraph paragraphs and then i'm going to pass my neighbor and then i'm going to print what's wrong here then what's well, saying okay this has to come back okay print and then if idx plus one which is right idx plus one and then we have our paragraph let's just uh, write paragraph and paragraph this is not required so paragraph and then we have our let's then do for distance for the for the distance what i'm going to do is distance to and let me just remove everything from here and this should not be inside perfect and now you can see so now we got our result here guys okay uh, and if you look at uh, the result that we have now the distance metric that we it depends right if you're using dot product if you are using you know uh, euclidean distance or whatever okay so that that depends on on that but if you look at the response that we got the history of python dates back to the late 1980s let's let's look at the hnsw lib what was we get? we also getting that right for this particular query so you can find it out over here uh, and let's look at the diversity if it gives you the artificial intelligence has been yeah fine so the both of it kind of gives you the same similar responses on the top two that you see here you can find it out over here now here as we if you go up uh, you can see we have used dot product now but in that case we were using l2 now here we are using dot product it means higher the score is better okay so you can see it higher the score it means it's more closer to the similarity search that's what it is but in the case of euclidean it's the reciprocal of it it's the reverse okay in that case now you can find out you know it kind of no, we got what we wanted to do with this uh, algorithm as well, the scanner. Okay, now this is fantastic, by the way. This we're going a bit deeper into to understand uh, how, how the things works basically. So now distance score for Euclidean, lower score equals to closer match, higher score equal to closer match for dot product, and it depends what kind of thing that you are using the. The relevancy is very important. The results basically suggest here you can see the model finds the paragraph about the history of Python okay uh it, it it understands basically a bit also the contextual uh a meaning behind it you know it, it gets this python of like about the history of python most relevant to your query followed by other related to technology and science that's what it's able to get it now that these results can be used in applications basically like you know in our rag the information retrieval also in recommendation systems or you no know, clust clustering the documents where understanding the semantic similarity between different text is crucial that's what it is guys now i think we're also done with uh scan okay now well, uh, let me just write code here also and I, I will give the notebook in my github repository in a very different file format So don't worry about you know, there'll be different files for all these algorithms. Let me just add a few cells here and Here let me make a text and call it now. We're gonna look at Spotify Spotify annoy let's look at that now. This is this is uh, the name is very interesting uh, Let me just uh, go inside this now uh, and now is like approximate nearest neighbors. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I just love the name. So approximate nearest neighbor. Oh, yeah. And you can find out it is a C, C++ library, by the way. Okay, uh, it's, it's very fast, but we're going to use this in Python. So we're going to use the Python binding of it. Okay, so Python bindings of this and basically it's to, basically to search for points in space that are close to a given query point again the underlying concepts remain the same that how does a vector database or a store performs the retrieval task you know using these advanced algorithms 
using langchain llama index you just uh, run one line of command and you think that uh, because it's a black box right if you use the high level abstract classes my agenda of this video is to give you an enough concept so you can go deeper and understand how this retrieves that's basically what i'm trying to do now uh basically this is spotify build this by the way okay if you can go through the research paper spotify build this for music recommendations that's what they did and now we also use it so music recommendation system they used it for uh, that's not be recommendation by the way these guys will say that okay you're not writing it correct it's used for large scale nearest neighbor search due to the efficiency and ability to work with large data sets just like google scan and now let's uh excuse me let's also install this this was the library pip install annoy and if you are building a vector database probably you have to write different classes for all of these algorithms and depending on your uh type of data if it's a uh, text data if it's no it's like have multi modalities in nature then depending on that you need ensemble uh, way of architectures to handle those uh, data types that's what you can do okay so we do not have to worry a lot about this because we have already embeddings that we can use now we'll directly build the okay let me have to first uh, get the annoy thingy so from annoy let me know if my videos are annoying by the way okay this we can I'll figure it out for that something you know uh from annoy import annoy index and here what i'm going to do is see we already have paragraphs we already have embeddings for the above ones so we can just going to use that now annoy requires let me just write building the annoy index now we are diff using different techniques to build indexes guys this is the important now building the annoy index what i'm doing is annoy requires you to specify the number of dimensions for the vectors and the metric let me just write it over here let me make this as a text and here i'm going to write annoy requires you to specify hopefully i'm typing it right specify the number of dimensions for the vector store for the vectors rather and the metric like and it uses a different metric i'll cover something called angular i don't know if you are aware about angular you know it also has euclidean of course for sure uh euclidean and you know so on and so forth you know you can cover that the whole day and let's do that so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to look at how we're going to create uh this uh index let's build the index for this so let's have a variable called f equals embeddings we already have the embeddings embeddings dot sip and let me just first get this sip of embeddings basically it's a length of item vector that will be indexed that's what we are doing here the next thing is the t basically it's and we are going to use angular for this that's what they recommend so noi index f and angular so angular is one of the distance metrics that we are using it's not the javascript framework that you are thinking it's a uh, distance metrics now the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to say okay for i in or not i in for i and vector so i vector in enumerate so i'm going to uh enumerate so enumerate and i'm going to pass the embeddings and then add the item i think this is right so t dot add item let's see that okay this is correct now we're going to build 10 trees okay so here this is what we're going to do next okay and let's do that Okay, so let's build a uh, 10 trees with uh, index with the 10 trees more trees gives higher precision when querying but of, of course you can again i'm not going to create a really a vector database that you can start uh, selling it off or at least make it open source on github right you have to do a lot of tweaking and uh, a trial and error to make that work so here what i'm going to do is okay uh, to make it more uh, t equals to 10 let's do that and so how should we do t dot this would be a build this would be a build yes t build 10 more trees will lead of course lead to more accurate results but take more time to build and memory because you're building a t here it's a time consuming thing okay more time to build and more memory and that's why if you have worked with decision trees and all right so we say that it's not good for larger data sets because sometimes it might make it very slow okay and it also takes a lot of memory and that's also an issue with this so t dot build and t dot save so we're gonna save that and it will return something like pass or something i'm gonna call this test dot an angular let's do that 
you can see it says true sorry i said past <laughs> okay basically it saves the built index to a file named i don't know if it's showing it here or something okay uh how can i check that out you can see that we have we have persisted on this so it's persist that we are persisting on disk basically it saves the build index to a file name test and and this allows the index to be reloaded later and that's what we are doing right because we will not do every time on a runtime we have to save and persist this on disk in our memory and then we have to load that uh, the next time that we are doing so now let's load that okay so for that what i'm going to do let's query this first now let me just write it querying the index querying the index so let's have NOA index and we have F and Angular and I'm loading the test dot and it should also say true or something and you can say it says true we are able to load it now now even if the index is already in memory these lines demonstrate how to load the saved index by the way guys that you dot load this is useful in scenarios when you build the index once and need to query it multiple times possibly in you know, different sessions or application that you'll be working with let me have a query sentence over here so query sentence again and why i'm writing again let me just get the query sentence no? so where is our query sentence Okay, we already have defined query sentence, so I'm not going to write it again. Why I'm writing it? So we don't do to uh, query sentence. We already have the query embedding as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write n neighbors. N neighbors equals let's keep it five. It specifies the number of nearest neighbors to find out. Okay. Now in this, I'm going to have a nearest neighbors. So nearest neighbors equals, and then u dot get an or uh, nns by the way get nns and by vector okay so by vector get nns by vector and here i'm going to pass my query embedding so query embedding n neighbors so you pass your query embeddings you know n numbers and then include distances as well so for that include distances equals true okay this is what i am doing here so i'm saying nearest neighbors or rather if you include distances then you have to separate that with distances as well right we need distances as well now n neighbors equals 5 nearest neighbors or let me just make it more explanatory this will be indices so this will be explanatory n neighbors 5 nearest neighbors uh, indices then distances u dot get nns by vector query embedding n neighbors and then include distances true fantastic let's run this fine now I'm going to just, just going to print that. So for that, uh, let me just print print query query sentence, and I'm saying print nearest neighbor, which is fine. Uh, what I'm saying is uh, for I to well, let me just I don't have to write that much of code for this. So what I'm going to do is for I and um, neighbor index. So let's have neighbor index and distance in enumerate again. Jip nearest neighbor indices and distances. This looks good. And then paragraph equals paragraphs neighbor idx the indices. And then I'm saying print i plus one the paragraph and then solve the paragraph and then solve the distance. And now you can see it gives you the history of Python dates back to the late 1980s fantastic uh, and you can see that score that we got here again uh, the score that we are getting the scoring mechanism again can and just to we'll come back to this but this question can be about angular let me just explain a bit so the angular distance that you have between two vectors is the angle in radians angular is the distance between the vectors that we have in the angle the the angle in radians between the two vectors irrespective of their magnitude because a vector has both a direction and a magnitude that's what we have studied in physics if you remember in your higher secondary days right and you should know the difference between a scalar and a vector and tensor you should know that now it's a way to measure how two vectors are oriented relative to each other this is very very intuitive and spotify has done a great job you know to create this beautiful library now it is often calculated using the cosine of the angle between the two vectors which ranges from minus one which is completely opposite and of course to one exactly the same which is commonly used major in this case now the angular distance can be derived from cosine as well now there's one more step involved which is normalization before computing the angular distance 
vectors are typically normalized to unit unit length which their magnitude is scales to 1 now this normalization ensures that the distance measure reflects the direction of the vectors not their length and that's why it is important in case of you know embeddings and drag you know uh, metric is very uh, particularly suitable for high dimensional data like text or image embedding this can also be used for image embeddings where the orientation of the vectors like representing the semantic or visual similarity is more important than their magnitude so just to understand that you can use this in your if you are building a multimodal vector database a vector database which can index both text and images data you can use spotify annoy to build a retrieval there okay that's what you can do now See, if you want to compare with Euclidean, which considers both magnitude and direction, angular distance focuses solely on the direction. It only looks at the direction. This makes it more suitable for cases where the scale of the vectors is not relevant or is normalized. That's that's where it's important. Okay. And yeah, I mean, th that's why, you know, Spotify have used it for a longer period of time. Suddenly, I don't know what if they are using, but this is fine. Now, the last one that I'm going to cover is very quickly uh, is FAS, everybody's favorite. And I know you you guys would have been already working with FAS that I also do. Uh, FAS is, is does not require any introduction because it has been created by Facebook. Facebook has created it. Okay. And yeah. So let's uh, jump into now FAS. So let me just write it down, write it down here. I'll make a text. And this is going to be our last and, and I'll go deeper into some of the other algorithms. If you guys like this video, I want to create uh, our own open source vector store, at least not the vector database, which might be really difficult, but a vector store, which is like really a low, no code kind of a thing. Okay. So let me just do that fast. Or let me just write the code. So for the fast, what I'm going to do is. Uh, it's uh, of course it's it's an acronym for Facebook AI Similarity Search. It's a very efficient library library for clustering and similarity search on the large data set developed by Facebook, the fair team of Facebook, Facebook AI research team. You know, Jan Likun has been the director of that, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, from his NYU days uh, a few years back. I think 2013 they created that lab. Okay. Now the basic step to install. To install FAS, what we're gonna do is pip install FAS CPU. Let's get the CPU because we are dealing with very less data here. You can also get GPU if you have n number of documents, you know, having uh, multiple pages. You can do that as well. Now, after that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import FAS. So let me just do import FAS. So I'm gonna have import FAS here, and then import numpy as np okay we already have numpy we don't need that so let's jump in directly I mean, let's let's create the uh or let me just do a bit so embeddings because we have to do a bit differently we need flow 32 yes correct uh so np dot array and then we have model dot encode paragraphs this is fine and then i'm gonna write h type Ash type flow 32 so let's let's just do that uh this is this is important so let's just do it once we do that i'm gonna have a dimension so the dimension embedding shape one that is right and then let's create the index. So I'm gonna use a flat index for simplicity. FAST supports many types of indices. Okay, it's a very vast library. You know, there have been a lot of developments with FAST as well. And of course, after the rise of RAG, they have been making a lot of changes with FAST. You know, they have BM25 retriever, they they have they deal with the sparse vectors, they deal with the hybrid search. There are a lot of things that you can do with FAST. Now I'm gonna create a uh flat index here so let me just do that so for that what you're gonna do is index equals you can see it's a index flat l2 d and then i'm gonna add the embeddings into that so index dot add and i'm just going to add my embeddings into that okay uh, so let's do that that's it let's have our query sentence uh then i will have my query embedding the same way so let me just copy this here so just copy to 
come here and paste and call this as something like query embeddings and in this not embeddings by the way this will be embedding query embedding and i'm saying np.arraymodel.encode and this is not paragraphs this has to be changed and this needs to be done as uh query sentence model.encode and then query sentence ah excuse me that has to be query sentence and then as type flow 32 perfect now the number of nearest never to retrieve i'm going a bit fast for fast because i'm sure that you guys know about fast already if you have worked with any kind of database i'm just saying index.search you know query embedding k let's do that and then just do for or let's just print query first so print and query for i ah not required not required we can just do i in range okay so for i in range and in the range of k in just the range of k you just do print uh of course f and i plus one ah, excuse me paragraph paragraph and then you just do the paragraph inside a paragraph and here i'm going to pass my i of zero and then again i two and then distance then pass the distance the same way so d zero and passing the same way i let's do that Mm -hmm. Surprising. Programming languages like Python have revolutionized paragraph T A E T F two. Hmm. Embeddings np dot array fat add embeddings query sentence. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So for fast clustering, you getting programming languages like Python have paragraph index search. So I'm saying for i in range k print f i plus one and then paragraph and then parag ah okay not paragraph paragraph so bad Ooh, so bad paragraphs that's what I was saying why I'm getting these characters here you know not the complete tokens distance let's see now hopefully it should work yes and you can see we got it okay uh, for this as well yeah this has been a long video guys you know i covered all the different type of algorithms that i should cover uh the uh all this uh vector store and dbs like chroma fast Viviate, pinecone milvers qdrant etc are using this kind of algorithms okay to build their vector databases and stores i hope you will find some uh, uh you'll find something from here you know you like to you would like to create your own maybe now after this some vector databases and stores and please let me know if you are uh getting stuck somewhere i'll be more than happy to help you this code will be available on my github repository separately for each of these algorithms yeah and that's all with the experimentation guys that's all uh for this experimentation guys you know i hope you understood the concepts in detail and that might help you in your journey of building a vector store or a database both open source or a product closed source or whatever now if you have any doubts uh thoughts feedbacks please let me know in the comment box you can also reach out to me through my social media channels please find those details in my channel uh, about us and also on the youtube channel banner okay if you like the content i'm creating please hit the like icon uh, for this video and if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe the channel uh, that will help me create more videos in near future Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.